رمضان مجال الصلوات طوبى للنفس بتقواها رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى النعيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله Dear brothers and sisters, welcome once again to Islam the Natural Way a special series of Ramadan TV programs prepared and produced by the Guyana Islamic Trust. In today's program, Brother Amir Khan, a student of the Guyana Islamic Institute, will speak to us on the pillars of Iman. This morning's recitation of Al-Quran is done by Brother Mu'allim Gomes, who is also a student of the Guyana Islamic Institute. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وإن تبدوا ما في أنفسكم أو تخفوه يحاسبكم به الله فيغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير صدق الله العظيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, all praises belong to Allah we seek, his, we seek His assistance and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and the evil of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead Him astray. And whomsoever He leaves to go astray, none can guide Him. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad وسلم, is His slave and messenger. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. As we proceed through this month of Ramadan, coming near to the end, we should have already seen progress on the goals that we have made for this month. And one of the most important goals of this month that is very crucial, and that is one of the purposes of this month, this beautiful month of Ramadan, that is to increase our iman, or our faith, so that throughout the year, it will be strong 
When Shaitan is dear to Aktakos, it will be strong. Now we should ask ourselves, what is Iman? Linguistically, in the Arabic language, Iman means faith or security. It comes from the word Amanam, which means to believe. But more than that, in Islam, Iman is sometimes used to talk about the level of, level of faith that we have, or it is used to refer to the components of our faith, or the pillars of our faith, and there are six. And how do we know this? We know this from Hadith Jibra'il, which is a Hadith in Sahih Muslim, which can be found in Imam Nawawi's 40 Hadith compilation, in which Jibra'il alayhi salam went to our beloved messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in front of his companions and asked our beloved Prophet several questions pertaining to different topics in Islam. One of these questions was, فَأَخْبِرْنِي anil iman." So, tell me about Iman. And our Prophet wasallam, responded, And took me Nabi Lahi, wa mala ikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wa liyawmil akhiri, wa took me Nabi Qadari, khayrihi, wa shahri. That is, to believe in Allah, to believe in His angels, to believe in His books. To believe in his messengers, to believe in the last day, and to believe in Qadr, that is, the good and evil of it. Now, as we delve into Iman, the fourth pillar is the most important, and everything else is built around this. That is to believe in Allah. Now, to believe in Allah, what is it? Now, Allah is the correct and proper term. For the one and only Rob, or Lord of the worlds, who alone is deserving of worship. And when we talk about believing in Allah, its foundation, it is centered around Tawheed, or oneness. And Tawheed comes from the same root word as Wahid. Wahid meaning one. Now, Tawheed has three components. The oneness of Allah's Lordship, Tawheed ar The oneness of Allah's Lordship, Tawheed, Tawheed al uluhiya And the oneness of His names and attributes, Tawheed al asma wal sifat. Now, the first one, Tawheed ar rububiyya comes from the same root word as, or Rob actually, comes from the same root word as Tarbiya. Tarbiya meaning to nourish. And when we look at Tawheed al rububiyya it is the nourishing relationship between Allah and His creation. As it is to affirm that Allah is the creator, that Allah is the owner and the originator of the universe. He is in control of everything in this universe and he provides and sustains for everything in this universe. He gives life and he causes death and anything else to do with this creation is from Allah. The proofs for this is natural inclination. We are naturally inclined to believe in a creator just as a baby is born with all his limbs intact. If one were missing, it would notice it. You would notice that something is missing. You would notice that something is missing just as it would grow up and notice that part of it is missing. Just as if, that's just as if someone is missing the Iman, the faith in Allah, he would notice that it is missing and be inclined to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the next proof of Tawheed al rububiyya is the logical proofs. If we look at everything in the universe, if we look at everything in the world, if we look at our very bodies, it is built so perfectly for us to survive. This art is spread out so perfectly that we could earn our livelihood. The very system that we breathe, the makeup of the gas in the atmosphere, 
Everything is made perfectly for us. The next proof of Tawheed al rububiyyah is the textual script, the textual proofs. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then he causes the night to overtake the day as it constantly pursues it. And the sun and the moon and the stars are subservient by his command. His is the creation and his is the command. Blessed is Allah, Lord of the worlds. Now, after Rubiyah, after one affirms that Allah is the owner and controller of everything, then you have to affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that is deserving of worship. The word ila is translated as God, but more accurately, it would be one that deserves worship. And as Rububiyah deals with the relationship of Allah nourishing and controlling and providing for his creation, Uluhiya deals with the relationship of the creation to Allah, that is, us, our worship of him. And what is this worship? Uluhiya is the worship of Allah out of submission. And this submission is out of the love for him, out of the hope for his reward and infinite mercy, and out of the fear of his punishment. And Allah says in Surah Dariyat, that is Surah, fix, that is Surah 51, in verse 56, I did not create mankind and jinnkind except to worship me. And in Surah Nisa, verse 36, Allah says, Worship Allah and associate nothing with Him. Now, when you, for one to affirm Rububiyah alone will not be enough. And we could use the example of the Quraysh. They affirm that Allah was one. Because if you ask them, who is the one that created the heavens and the earth and subjugating the sun, the moon, they would surely say Allah. But they worshipped other idols besides him. They had all kinds of different, different idols. Even though they affirm that Allah is the one creator of everything, they were still fall, fell under kufr, disbelief, because they did not affirm the oneness of his worship. So, Rububiyah, when you affirm that Allah is one, you must then treat him with the respect that he is the only one that sustains everything and worship him alone. Now, the next component of Tawheed is the oneness of Allah's names and attributes. Allah says in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna That He has the most beautiful names and attributes. We believe that Allah has the most beautiful names and attributes befitting of, befitting of His Majesty. And He is far, among, far above any imperfections or flaw. We do affirmation of His names and attributes without ascribing any resemblance to them. So when Allah talks about his wrath or his laughter, or if he talks about his hands, like when he talks about the, his hands in the Quran or his shin, we affirm that, yes, Allah has these, but we do not liken it or imagine that there is anything like, in, like it in this dunya, in this world, or in the universe. But we also do not deny it outright. Or try to make it something like, try to imagine it as something metaphorical. We cannot, because we cannot reject the Quran and the Sunnah. So when Allah says he has hands, we cannot be say that is, he is referring to the, his power. Or we cannot say he does not have hands at all. We must accept it without imagining or likening anything to it. The next pillar of Iman 
is to believe in, his, in the angels. Now, we know from a, the, a hadith that angels are created from light. When, they, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told Aisha عنه, that angels are created from light, jinns are created from smokeless fire, and man was created to that which was mentioned to you before. That is in the Quran when it was mentioned that Adam was, men, was created from clay. Now to believe in the angels entails that we believe in their existence, their names, their characteristics and their duties. And some of these names and duties I will be mentioning here. That is Jibra'il alayhi salam whose duty was to bring down revelation. Mikael, whose duty was whose duty is to control wherever the rainfall goes. Israfil, whose duty is to blow the trumpet. Malik, who is the guardian of the gates of hell. Ridwan, who is the guardian of the gates of Jannah. Malik Malik Ul Maut, who is the angel of death, and Munkar and Nakir, who are the angels of the graves. Now, when we talk about angels, what you need to understand about them is that they do everything that Allah commands them to do. They do not disobey Allah. They differ in status. And the best of these angels are the ones that fought in battle. They have magnificent speed. Their number is unknown, but every day, 70,000 angels go to perform tawaf at Baitul Ma'mur and they never return and this tawaf that the angels make has been happening since the inception of the angels they are neither male nor female they are modest able to take on different forms reside in the sky they do not eat or drink there is no space in the sky except that there is an angel doing sujood they pray to Allah and make dua for him to forgive us. And they say Amin to our duas. And they help the believers in times of war. As mentioned before, the best of the angels were the ones that fought in battle. And they are harmed by whatever harms the humans. That is foul smell. The next pillar of Iman is to believe in the messengers. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, we have already sent down our messengers with clear evidences and done with them the scriptures. And in the 285th verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says that the messenger and the believers believe in what has been sent down to them. Each one of them believe in Allah, His angels, and His scriptures. Now, Allah has sent books to messengers in their respective languages and we believe in all of them generally and we believe that the one in the ones that Allah has specifically mentioned that is the Az-Zabur, the At-Tawrah, the Injil, the Suhuf, and the Quran. The Tawrah was revealed to Musa alayhi wasalam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, indeed, we send down the Torah in which was guidance and light, and the Injil, which was revealed to Isa alayhi salam, where Allah also says in the Quran, we give Isa the gospel in which there was guidance and light, conforming what was in the Torah. Now, we believe in these books as they were revealed to the messengers, not as they are today. And we believe that these books were applicable to a, a limited, to a particular people for a limited time. As these books were not promised to be preserved. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 75, Do you believe, do you expect them to be true to you, though a group of them would hear the word of Allah and knowingly corrupt it? after understanding it and then in verse 79 of Surah Al-Baqarah he says 
So woe to those who distort the scripture with their own hands and say, This is for Allah, from Allah, seeking a fleeting gain. So woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they have earned. We also believe that these books, laws, were abrogated, and these were mostly the secondary or detailed laws. Suitable to the time and place, the, and the people the books were revealed to. The primary laws or the foundational principles, such as Tawheed, prohibition of shirk, good morals, and so on, every bro book preached the same message. But we would not need to go back to these old books as, these, as the Quran has already covered these topics in depth. Now, Let's talk about the Quran. This is the final and best of all the books. It will be applicable and it was applicable since the advent of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's prophethood until the end of time. It came as an abrogator to the previous books. And the Quran as we know, was revealed in this month of Ramadan. As such, we are the Ummah that has been blessed with the greatest of all the revelations, so we should give it its right and read as much of it as possible, especially in this month that it was revealed. The next pillar of Iman is to believe in the messengers. Now, when we believe in them, as we said before, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 285, Allah talks about how each the messenger and his believers believe in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messengers. Now, believe in the messengers entails that you believe in their existence and they came with the truth. You believe in all of the messengers mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith believe in all that they stated and that they completed their messages and submit and act in, in accordance with the final message. That is the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The difference between a messenger and a prophet is a messenger is someone who is given a message while the prophet, a prophet is someone who follows the message of a messenger before him. Every messenger is a prophet, but every prophet is not a messenger. Some messengers were given preferences, advantages, and have status over others. And we know this from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 253. And the best of the five prophets, the best of all the messengers and prophets, are the five messengers of great will. They are... Prophet Nuh, Prophet Isa, Prophet Musa, Prophet Ibrahim, and Prophet Muhammad. May Allah send peace upon them all. Now, the best of these prophets is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So. When we talk about the descriptions of the prophets, we know that all of them are males. They do not have knowledge of the unseen. They were very righteous, honest, sharp. They had sharp intellect. They were handsome in appearance, and they were strong and courageous, and they were pure. We believe that each nation has been sent a messenger. The prophets have infallibility when it comes to delivering a message of their religion, their respective messages, and they do not fall into major sins. And, a re and the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the messengers to be humans and not angels is that they could be an example that we can follow. And the general task of the messengers was to convey the message, call people to believe in Allah, Give, give glad tidings and warnings, correct the souls and purify them, establish proof upon the people, lead the Ummah and correct the corrupted thoughts among the people. Now, 
after one believes in all of that, they come to the belief in the last day or the Akhirah. No, to believe in the last day and the Akhirah starts from the grave. And the grave is known as small Qiyamah because everyone's afterlife starts there. Now I cannot go in depth in the grave about the grave because of the time constraints, but in short, when one dies and goes to the grave, his soul is returned and he is questioned by two angels, Munkar and Nakir, and they ask him who they ask him who is his Lord? What is his religion and who is this man? And the believers and the righteous will say that their Lord is Allah, that their religion is Islam, and that man is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that they know it from reading the book of Allah and believing in it. And Allah will make spacious their graves and send fragrance and a bed from Jannah. Now, for the disbelievers and the wicked, they will say, oh, oh, I don't know, oh, oh, I don't know, oh, oh, I don't know. And Allah will close in their graves till they close in their graves until their ribs interlock and send heat and hot winds from the from Jahannam. Now when we get to the day of Qiyamah itself, there are many signs, but the ten major signs is the coming of Ad Dajjal, the descension and return of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, the coming of Ya'juj and Ma'juj the major landslide in the east, the major landslide in the west, and the major landslide in the Arabian Peninsula, the smoke that will kill all the believers, the coming of the beast, and the rising of the sun from the west, and finally the fire that will push everyone to the gathering. After that, the trumpet will be blown. Now the first trumpet is called Arrojifa, and it will begin feebly, very small, and then intensify and everyone who hears it will be unable to escape for it from it and it will destroy all of them now between this blowing of the trumpet and the second blowing of the trumpet our raw difa, there will be a period of 40 we don't know if it is months days years but on the second blowing everyone that had died would be resurrected and this resurrection is called an nushur upon the second blowing the earth will split open and all will stand up and the force who will rise up will be our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam everyone will emerge like locusts spread out and they will answer the call of the caller israfil to the place of reckoning in the day of qiyamah or yawmul hisab the reckoning and the questioning, questioning will not begin until Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will ask Allah for the day to start, and this will be one of his one of the several forms of intercession he will be granted, and this is the greatest one of all of them. Now, when the day actually starts, Jannah and Jahannam will be brought close. Jahannam will be brought with 70,000 rains and these rains, these rains will have 70,000 angels holding each of them. The sky will burst with clouds and the angels will, des will descend. The Lord of the worlds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to pass judgment and the first thing he will ask everyone about when he questions them, is their salah, he will speak directly to them without interpreter. The person will see his deeds on his right and the left, the fire before him. Part of the hisab will be the weighing of the deeds. It will be done on the mizan. The de these deeds will determine if he will be rewarded or punished. After the hisab or the questioning there will be the crossing of the sirat 
Each group will follow its gods into Jahannam until only the believers remain. The bridge itself is finer than a hair but shorter, shorter than a sword. The believer will follow their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala across the Sirat. The believers will have lights according to their deeds and the hypocrites will have no light and they will be begging the believers for their light to share their light with them. The, the sirat will hook and cut the people depending on their deeds and whomsoever crosses the sirat they will enter Jannah with, through whichever gate they have unlocked based on what they did during their lifetime. The sixth pillar of Iman is Qadr. And Qadr is the divine decree of Allah. Qadr can be defined in two words. Qadr, which is decree, and Qadr, which means power. Qadr refers to what has been written and decreed based on the infinite foreknowledge of Allah. And Qadr is when that, de when that decree of Allah comes to fruition. Now, when used separately, they both encompass the meaning of both of all two of these words. Now, Qadr has four pillars, and the fourth pillar is Ilm, and that is, as mentioned before, the infinite foreknowledge of Allah that He knows everything before it happens in the universe, and nothing is absent from Him, as it says in Surah 10, verse 61. Nothing is absent from your Lord, even something that is of the autumn's weight, or smaller or greater. The second pillar of Qadr is Kitab, and this is the writing and recording of everything on the preserved tablet. As in a hadith, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, the first thing that was created by Allah is a pen. Then he ordered it to write, and when it asked what to write, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, write everything that will happen until the day of judgment. The third pillar of Qadr is Iroda. This is that nothing, whether related to Allah's actions or the actions of the creation, can occur without His permission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah does what He wills. And when it comes to the creation, Allah says in Surah Taqwir that you cannot will except that Allah wills, the Lord of the world. Now, the next pillar of Qadr is Khalq. This is the pillar of Qadr that covers Allah's creating and originating all things in accordance to His knowledge, will, and writing. The creations and their actions, their very movements and stillness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Safat, and he, Ibrahim alayhi salam, said, Do you worship that which you crave when Allah created you and the actions that you do? Now, that was a brief definition of Qadr and the pillars of Qadr. If you want to find out more, there's a lot of books about Tawheed and Aqeedah that you could check out and get a better understanding. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Until tomorrow, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان صيام ودعاء رمضان أمان وصفاء رمضان صيام ودعاء رمضان أمان وصفاء 
رمضان سلوك وعطاء أهلا بقدومك يا رمضان رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى